The Arctic is bitterly cold and seemingly empty of life. Not exactly where you would expect to find a biological treasure trove. But the very coldest, hottest, deepest, and most inaccessible places on Earth are the areas that could soon provide solutions to one of the most urgent problems of our time. The increasing number of drug-resistant superbugs. The EU-funded project, Increasing Value and Flow in the Marine Biodiscovery Pipeline, or Pharmacy, is tackling this challenge. The goal of the International Consortium of Scientists and Researchers is to discover new drug compounds. To achieve it, they're searching some of the most remote places on the planet. Pharmacy is a big European project with 24 partners from 13 different countries where we try and discover new antibiotics and new agents for central nervous system diseases from deep sea and cold adapted marine bacteria. One of the biggest crises facing um, medical treatments at the moment is the fact that there's very few antibiotics coming into the clinic. There's the problem that many bacteria have become resistant to almost every known antibiotic known to man and that therefore we need new antibi antibiotics with new modes of action. Secondly, there are very few good treatments for central nervous system diseases such as epilepsy. So we're looking for, on the one side, new antibiotics from the deep sea marine bacteria, and on the other side, we're looking for new agents for treatment of epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease. Antibiotic resistance in particular poses a huge problem to modern medicine. Drug resistance in general means that a microbe is able to resist the effects of a certain drug, that it has become immune to the treatment. Every year, more pathogens grow resistant to conventional antibiotics, and there's no end in sight. The problem is that uh, when uh, patients are in need of antibiotics, and the bacteria and the microorganisms are resistant, then we actually do not have very good treatment for them. We are basically back to where we were. 80 years ago before penicillin came on the market. This is a, a general problem for uh, all kinds of uh, treatment uh, in uh, infectious diseases and also in cancer therapy. Antibiotic resistance is caused by the excessive use of drugs. The World Health Organization has now raised the alarm. If we don't do more to fight resistance, routine procedures like cesarean sections or hip surgery could soon prove potentially fatal. The WHO estimates that if we don't take immediate action, the number of drug resistance related deaths worldwide could rise to 10 million a year. It, it all comes down to three basic strategies. We have to uh, prevent infections and do good infection control. Uh, we have to use less antibiotics and more conservative antibiotics, and then we have to find new therapies. But what's the best approach to developing new therapies and treatments? Most of today's pharmaceuticals have been derived from compounds that occur in nature. About 70% of all the drugs in the clinic right now are derived or originate from nature. So when, particularly when we look for antibacterials, anti-cancer agents, anti-inflammatories, they mainly come from nature, uh, whereas for other, other diseases, typically we can try and design drugs, but we're not good enough yet sometimes to beat nature at its own game. But finding effective new naturally occurring substances is no easy task. Readily accessible parts of the world have already been searched and researched extensively. So the pharmacy scientists have adopted a different approach. There was a discussion in what kind of samples to investigate, but it was natural to go to unexplored areas and like the deep sea and the Arctic is one of those areas that are less explored than the, 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 the tropical areas. So it was natural to think about the unexplored areas to go in to see because it's about increasing the odds to find new things and then you should go to somewhere uh, extreme or less investigated. 
The researchers from Tonzu University, for example, head out twice a year on voyages lasting for weeks, collecting samples from the seabed, water, and life forms like sponges. Their hope? To discover microorganisms that produce still unknown compounds which can be used in novel drugs. Let's see what we got in here, Janet. Uh, what the divers brought for us. We have some nice sponges here. It's the sponge that is interesting for the yeah. bacteria. Cut it into small pieces. Our group have worked with both marine invertebrates, but also now when the pharmacy project started, then we started to focus more into the microorganisms. And the recent years we have focusing on a unique collection of marine fungi, and it's really unique because I think not many have looked into Arctic marine fungi. And as we already have seen, they definitely do have some antibacterial compounds. Now it's just up to us to really put the structure and then describe them. The microorganisms they find are grown in the lab, scaled up, and then tested for various characteristics to find out whether, for example, they have antibacterial or anti-epileptic or anti-Alzheimer's effects. So here you can see that the fungi has been growing and we've been taking out samples from the fungi just to transfer them directly to test them against the human pathogen bacteria to see whether they can affect the growth on them. So on this plate I have um, taken out five different fungi from these plugs and then we have tested them to see if, whether it could affect the growth of Pseudomonas arginosa which is a, a, a human pathogen bacteria causing troubles, especially for cystic fibrosis patients. So just by taking the fungi directly from these plates and add them for this test plate, we can see that these four fungi has potential antibacterial compounds within them. It's affecting the growth. But this fungi does not affect this bacteria in particular. But then we know that at least four of these are, have potential to go further down the pipeline. So it's just transferring them directly from the plates to another one to test to see if they have antibacterial compounds within them. The scientists then isolate the active compounds that are responsible and determine their structures. Once an active compound has been established, it can be further developed into a potential new drug. Two interesting novel compounds, both active in central nervous system diseases, have been discovered so far in the pharmacy project. But even so, it could take years before drugs developed from them are approved for market. So the real aim is to produce antibacterial agents with new modes of action so that they don't develop, that the resistance is not developed to these new molecules. So that's the key aim of the project. The second aim is to produce new medicines for um, epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease. And what we found so far is that the biggest success we've had is in the area of epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease, in fact. And that we're still working towards finding good molecules for bacterial infections. Although we have 10 or so candidates, we need to take those further down the pipeline. The deeps could harbor many other novel drug compounds, but regulations for research in the open ocean and questions about the rights of use and exploitation are still very vague at the international level. The Pharmacy Research Group is therefore also providing recommendations on how to address existing legal barriers. But to achieve equal access to novel drug compounds that are hidden in the Earth's marine environment, it will almost certainly be necessary to adjust existing legal standards for biodiversity. Biodiversity in the sea at the moment falls under possibly two regimes, which is the common heritage of mankind or the freedom of the high seas. 
and depends on what you believe as to which one you buy into. My feeling is that it should be, it should belong to everyone and everybody should be able to benefit. And the best way to do that, the simplest way to do that is to link it to capacity building so that every country has the ability to benefit from the samples that come from the deep sea. We have come up with a way, I think, that, that is acceptable to both sides and it pays tribute to both the common heritage of mankind, the freedom of the high seas, and it's essentially a system of um, common domain, it's what we call the common domain approach, which means that everybody benefits, but everybody has to you know, contribute to the system in some way, either capacity building or benefit sharing.